In this video, we're going to calculate the delivery time and distance between pairs of locations in Airtable. To do that, we're going to use the Google Maps API and the Data Fetcher app for Airtable. So you can see I've got a list of orders here, and I've, for each I've got an origin and a destination, and those are addresses. I've also got a distance field with type single line text. The next thing to do is to create a new grid view called to process and add the following filters. Origin is not empty. Destination is not empty. And distance is empty. So you can see all of our existing records are here. And once we add in the distance using data fetcher, they're going to move out of this view. So the next thing to do is to add an app from the Airtable app marketplace called data fetcher. And once you've installed it, you'll need to sign up for a free data fetcher account or sign into your existing account. And then click on create your first request. Search for Google Maps. The next thing we need to do is to create a Google Maps API key for the distance matrix API. So there's a link to this page in the video description. But go to this page and click create new project. Then give your project a name and click Create. Once you've done that and the project is created, you'll need to enable billing for it. So go to the next button in this Google Maps page and click Go to Billing. Then you'll need to select the project that you want to enable billing for. So we're going to use this demo project. This will take you to the billing page where you'll need to link a billing account to that demo project. Now, if you haven't already, you'll need to add some card details or a bank account. And this is because the Google Maps API is a paid API, but there is a free tier and there's also a link to the um, the costs involved in the in the video description. So once you've done that, you'll need to enable the Google Maps API. So click this, enable the distance matrix API. And again, this is going to take us to the Google Cloud Platform. And we're going to have to enable this distant matrix on our demo project. So make sure you've got the right project selected at the top and then click enable. And this will take a second, but it will basically allow us to use the distance matrix API, which is what we're going to use to calculate time and distance. So once you've done all that, we're going to need to create the API key. And this is the last step. And you can actually see it's been created here for us. So we can copy that and paste it into the API key input in data fetcher. Then for the endpoint, select this first one, calculate distance and time between start and end locations. Give your request a name, like fetch distance and time, and click save and continue in the bottom right. Then for the origin location, rather than typing one in, we're gonna use the values in our table. So click this add icon on the right hand side, pick the origin field, Make sure that the run on every record in view is to process, that view we created earlier, and click confirm. And you can see that's got a reference to our origin field now. Do the same for destination, selecting destination for the field, clicking confirm. And then you can here you can set the units, so I'm going to use metric, and you can get different transportation modes here as well. So if you want a particular type of transportation, one thing here to know is that if you use transit, then you can select a type of transit here. But let's just use the default, which is driving. So we'll just leave that blank. Double check the output table is orders and the output view is to process and then click save and run. You can toggle this so we don't always see this warning. Click continue. And then here we've got the different fields. So I'm going to remove destination and, destination and origin because we've already got those. And then distance, we want to map to the existing distance field. 
And then for these other fields, we're going to create new fields. So we're going to have a distance in meters field, which is going to be a number, a duration, which can be single line text, and then a duration in seconds, which is going to be a number field again. So once you're happy, click Save and Run. Data Fetcher is now going to create those fields for us in the orders table and then run the request on every record in the orders table and move it out of there. And now we can see that the distance, distance in meters and duration and duration in seconds has been pulled in for all of those peers of locations. So finally, back in Data Fetcher, we can hide this message in the future as well and click close. And then we can schedule this to run every hour. And even if our two process view is empty, it will still run okay, it just won't do anything. But as soon as we've got an order in there that needs the distance added, it's going to calculate the delivery time and distance for that order. So once you're happy with the schedule, you can click save and that's gonna run automatically.